Brought to you by GTA, your island, your network. He's had his personal biases in the past over medicinal marijuana, but Governor Eddie Calvo says Guam now has good reason to undertake this change with Bill 8. Special Assistant Eric Palacios read testimony on behalf of the island's chief executive. For decades, the use and sale of cannabis has been illegal. Its illicit use frowned upon as a harbinger of the moral decay of our society. The Cannabis Control Act was introduced earlier this year by Governor Calvo. The bill would regulate the use, production, sale, and taxation of cannabis and declassify marijuana as a Schedule I controlled substance. The law is meant to provide order and to protect life and property. So if the people discern that an adult use of cannabis causing no harm or inconvenience to the life or property of another is within the order of society, then prohibition now is unconnected to the meaning of the law. The consumption of cannabis, therefore, should be an adult's choice that involves only the person's conscience and health. Essentially, Adeloupe says this bill would treat cannabis like alcohol. You have to be at least 21 years old, drivers may not be high while driving, and employers may structure workplace policy to preclude cannabis use. Customs and Quarantine Agency's acting chief, Major Philip Tyron, meanwhile, says he supports the will of the people. And while they still have a responsibility to its federal counterparts, he outlined anticipated effects, such as an increase of canine detection teams and encounters at the borders and delayed movement of passengers. The passage of Bill 8-34 will decriminalize can cannabis possession and current procedures will be affected. Increased encounters may require hiring of more customs officers to accommodate increased detections at the border associated with cannabis-related offenses. He adds the customs agency will be required to develop standard operating procedures with federal law enforcement partners and the U.S. Attorney General's office to determine appropriate course of action. As for community stakeholders like former school teacher and counselor Belinda Snyder, she's against recreational use even saying Bill 8 is inorganic. They say children first, but it's the opposite. It's not about our protection and our safety, but dollar signs written all over the wall. I am a taxpayer, and I can say in the future, the government might be sued for even allowing such a bill. Others like Megan McAlonis feel people need to get past their fear of marijuana. And another reason why I support recreational instead of the just the medicinals to make sure that we include everyone, even if um, they're not diagnosed with a certain medicinal problem, marijuana can still help them as a healing plant. And for Lisa Bordalio, she believes cannabis is a safer alternative to the destructed drug she says is taking over the island. For myself and for my family, I would prefer that if they choose to medicate themselves, that they do it holistically with a natural plant that possesses proven medical and therapeutic benefits and is non-toxic. Bordalio says she educated herself on cannabis through the organization Grassroots Guam. Managing partner Andrea Pelicani also testified, saying the trends show the legalization of cannabis for medical and personal use does not increase access to minors, but in fact significantly decreases illicit drug use. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Ken Quintaniza. Brought to you by GTA, your island, your network.